In this video I'm going to look at solving a very specific uh, stationary distribution problem and this is a response to a question asked on Mathematical Monk's video and so I'm going to look through look at uh, the stationary distribution that Mathematical Monk had there we tried to answer this in the comments section but it's a bit difficult on YouTube so we've got the typical sort of stationary distribution problem which is we've got some vector um, pi which is our state uh, we're multiplying it by some matrix T and we're going to wind up with the same state pi and because this is a uh, problem we've already had provided to us we've got our our uh, transition matrix already provided by mathematical monk and it's a four uh, four by four transition matrix I'll just take a little second to write down here I apologize I'm no no Simon Khan or Mathematical Monk and I'm getting used to this uh, still getting used to this tablet now oh, a bit of a mistake there bit of a uh, something to look out for and I'm almost certain to make this mistake myself in in going through this is that we are dealing with uh, row vectors so if you're like me and you're used to column vectors you have to get used to the fact that we're dealing with row vectors here so pi can be written out as the four as four numbers the pi vector can be written out as the four numbers pi sub 1 pi sub 2 pi sub 3 and pi sub 4 and so the real problem we're trying to solve here is what is this uh, what is this vector that gives us this stationary distribution and the that problem is just simply solving for each one of these numbers so let's write out uh, let's write this out um, so so the stationary distribution is equal to and let's write this out completely here um, I've swapped sides here but that doesn't matter I'm allowed to pi 1 pi 2 pi 3 pi 4 and we're multiplying by this stationary distribution sorry not the stationary distribution this transition matrix Okay, there we go. So this is our uh, this is our t, and this is our pi, and we can write this out now as a bunch of uh, a bunch of equations. Uh, let me switch to I'll go with green. So our first equation is simply pi one times zero. Oh, sorry, this this is pi one two three four. So let's actually write out pi one. We know that pi one which is our first uh, first element of our vector is equal to pi 1 times 0 plus pi 2 times a half and this is just matrix multiplication the only trick here is we're going well it's a trick for me we're going what is normally for me backwards because I'm used to dealing with column vectors as I said before and many many people are So there we go. We have uh, pi one is equal to all of this, which of course we can just cross out all the zeros, and we're left with pi one is equal to half pi two. Well, that's convenient, and we've got three more equations to write out. So we've got pi two is equal to, and this time I'll just write out the ones that are non-zero. So pi two is equal to one times pi one. plus no pi twos plus half of pi three pi three is equal to um, sorry pi three is equal to pi one times zero so pi three is equal to no pi ones plus half of pi two plus no pi threes plus a pi four Uh, 
Uh, pi 4 is equal to no 1s, no 2s, half a pi 3. And no 4s. And we do have a fifth equation that we can use. We know that all of these must sum up to 1. Must sum up to 1 because otherwise the uh, every time we go through a transition we would actually get a, a result larger, larger than this. Anyway, I'm sure there's much better proofs than that. But you can intuitively see it. So we've got pi 1 is equal to uh, is equal to half pi 2. Let's sub that into equation 2. That gives us pi 2 is equal to half pi 2, which I've subbed, subbed in for pi 1, plus half pi 3. Let's subtract half pi 2 from both sides. So half pi 2 is now equal to half pi 3. And therefore, pi 2 is equal to pi 3. Great stuff! Now, um, using equation 1, uh, using our new equation, which I'm now going to call 6, and our equation 4, we can do the following. We can write out that uh, pi 1 is equal to, using equation 1, half pi 2. Now we're using equation 6, we know that half pi 2 is equal, well pi 2 is equal to pi 3, so half pi 2 is equal to half pi 3. And we can see that half pi 3 is equal to pi 4, using equation 4. Give us some room now. We also know from equation 5 that all of these sum to 1. So let's create uh, a new equation from equation 5. I'll go back to yellow. I haven't got that on the screen at the moment. So we'll call this equation 7, which is equal to sort of 5 dashed. Um, and we've got pi 1. And now I'm going to substitute for pi 2, 3 and 4. I'm going to substitute in their various pi 1s, if you like. So, pi 1 plus pi 2. Well, pi 2 is equal to... Half of pi 2 is equal to pi 1. So, two, uh, so we multiply both of those by 2. We get pi 2 is equal to 2 pi 1. So, pi 2 is equal to 2 pi 1. So, I can put in 2 pi 1 here. Again, if half pi 3 is equal to pi 1, then pi 3 must be equal to 2 pi 1. So for pi 3, I can put in 2 pi 1. And we're adding pi 4. So pi 4 is equal to pi 1. So I can just put in a single pi 1 there. And equation 5 says we add all of these up. Oh, whoa. All of that time I'd left equation 5 unfinished. That's not an equation, that's just a bunch of numbers. We need, uh, I said all of these sum up to 1, but I forgot to write the equals 1 there. So, all of that sums up to 1 as well, because I've just substituted in some numbers. We simplify that, that's 6 pi 1 is equal to 1. Therefore, pi 1 is equal to 1 on 6. Great! Because I now know every number in terms of pi 1, and I know what pi 1 is, our problem just needs to be written out really now. So pi 1 is equal to 1 on 6, half, uh, which is equal to, um, pi 2 is equal to 2 pi 1, so 
pi 2 is equal to 2 pi 1, which is 2 on 6. Pi 3 is the same as pi 2. And pi 4 is equal to the same as pi 1. We can do a quick check. Remember we said they all add up to 1, so we got 1 6 plus 2 6 plus 2 6 plus 1 6. That's equal to 1. So that looks okay. And we now just write that out. Pi is equal to pi 1, pi 2, pi 3, and pi 4. So pi is equal to 1 sixth, 2 sixths, 2 sixths, 1 sixth. And there we go. That's our stationary distribution problem solved.